The final glyph will be human, and I can't believe I'm saying that. In fact, I have not played a human form druid in any of the seasons, let alone run this glyph. So it's the first time I've leveled this up myself. You can see here, basically unscathed into tier 75, just converted over. My master working ranks aren't all the way there. A couple pieces are higher up than others. However, a lot of them are just still sitting at rank four. This build, once it has its final gem, will have 70,000 life. This will be armor capped as the master working ranks improve armor on things like the chest and even the pants, which have armor as well as one of the affixes. And you're gonna be resist capped as well. So this build has everything you need. Welcome back everyone. Today we're showing off the best druid build in season four. And this build is by Ace of Spades from Goblin Inc. And to be honest, he's probably had some of, if not the best build in all of the Diablo seasons so far. So if you haven't seen that channel or seen Ace of Spades as a druid player, make sure you check that out and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. This build isn't anything fancy. It's just very, very good. You can have incredible survivability. This is a tier 75. I've just converted over to the build late last night as I saw it over the weekend. And I would recommend that if you're looking to push the pit that you would swap to this build as well. Now, unfortunately, the biggest negative of this build is that it's not a lot of fun. It's designed solely for pushing and you may find other builds a little more enjoyable, but you can use this build in order to push as far as you would like, farm some materials, upgrade your gear quicker, and then swap back to your other build. Alternatively, you could make a second character and use one for pushing and one for all the other content that you prefer to play. However, that choice is up to you. Now, one thing that's interesting about this build is it's actually slower. It survives, but it's slower. And what I mean by that is if we compare this to say a tornado build that I've shown on this channel already this season, the tornado build will clear each respective tier quicker than this build will. However, the tornado build will cap out much sooner. At tornado, I was able to clear up to tier 75 which is what you just saw there, and I basically went unscathed, taking virtually no damage, never being in danger of dying. Regardless of which other builds you may have been playing, you'll notice that they will cap out before this build. So although you may clear lower tiers faster, ultimately this build will allow you to push further, farm more materials overall. And if you're just looking for the challenge to push as high as possible, this would be the one to go with as well. Now, the basis of how you play this build is to use your basic skill, Wind Shear, and you just spam it over and over. You can even hold the button down. What you want to do in between using the wind shear is use some other abilities to buff or debuff. And that's essentially all you're going to be doing here. You have blood howl in order to buff your attack speed. It also heals you for a large amount of health as mentioned. You have debilitating roar, which can actually have 100% uptime on the enemies to significantly reduce their damage by 70% as well. All of this helps the build survive. Trample is to be reserved as you're unstoppable. If you happen to get stunned or anything like that, you can use the trample to then break free and continue with your damage. The only required unique for this particular build is the God Slayer Crown. This can give you a large boost to damage whenever you stun, freeze, or immobilize an elite enemy. It's going to pull them all in. This allows for substantial periods where you can just nuke down enemies, clearing up to the boss. And this is pretty important because as I mentioned, there are other builds that actually clear the rifts out a lot faster. Now I'm running Yen's Blessing and you can actually run Yen's Blessing or you can just run a pair of legendary boots with something like the Metamorphosis Aspect. That will work just as well. You could even run Ghost Walker if you prefer that. So there's some flexible options there. In terms of the affixes on your gear, you're going to want maximum life on every single piece. And you'll notice that in fact, there is life everywhere. Maximum life is going to have a lot of scaling and synergy within other reasons of the build. That's just going to allow you to take advantage of that by scaling it as high as possible. We have mentioned already that Blood Howl will give you 20% of your maximum life, so the larger your life pool, the more of that you'll get. All of the rubies that you run are going to scale off of maximum life, so some more benefit. We're going to further increase this through Skill Tree and also Paragon for additional benefits as well. For the remainder of the skills, you've got Wolves. The Wolves essentially you can use just to put on the boss, and it'll essentially keep the focus or the aggro there, allowing you to stand still and continue to attack the boss, just giving you more DPS uptime. You also have Cyclone Armor, which is going to give you damage reduction, but you also have the ability to activate this and actually knock or push enemies back. For that reason, I run the Yen's Blessing Boots. Like I said, the boots are flexible. However, with the knockback, I don't find that I actually need the Metamorphosis all that often. So let's go ahead and jump into the aspects first. And the reason for that is because I actually find that more of the synergy or the way that the build is composed has to do with the actual aspects on the gear. So there may even be other variations that you can run with other potential skills. However, for the pit, wind shear is very nice because it allows you to maintain your distance. So imagine that's the reason or one of the reasons why Ace of Spades may have chosen this ability as opposed to some of the other basic attacks. Like I said, God Slayer Crown in the helmet slot. Unfortunately, this is kind of a required piece. You can certainly use a legendary in place of this for the time being until you acquire one. However, you won't be able to push as far without this piece. You can get cooldown reduction, which is really important for keeping all those buffs and debuffs rolling. Top of that, that stun freeze is just tremendous. Plus the multiplicative damage that you get once that goes off just really allows and improves the clear speed for clearing out the rifts prior to the boss. 
It's strongly recommended that you have gear with greater affixes, but you do not need those to set this build up and start farming. In fact, I started this with no pieces that had any greater affixes just to try it out, and the build already was pushing higher than my tornado build, which had several pieces with greater affixes, so the build itself is just incredibly strong. That being said, this is one of two pieces with greater affixes that I've gotten in this particular loadout, at least at the moment. We're going to run willpower, maximum life, and resistance to all enemies on the chest. Looking for total armor and also freeze or stun on the tempering. We want to make sure that you know it is probably best to find a chest piece that has resistance to all elements and one of the other stats. That way you can reroll for either willpower or maximum life. This will most likely save you a lot of money when it comes to rerolling the enchants. In fact, if you hit the like and the subscribe button right now, I can guarantee that you will get the next enchanting roll that you're looking for on the very first try. As for the aspect itself, we're running Hectic Aspect on the chest. This is going to allow you to cast 5 basic skills, which is what we're spamming over and over. It's going to reduce one of your active cooldowns. As mentioned, you can have 100% uptime of Debilitating Roar on enemies. The only way this will actually fall off is if you cast Debilitating Roar, kill that enemy, and get to the next enemy before the cooldown is up. But when you're fighting something like a boss, you can actually use the Debilitating Roar, have the cooldown recover, and then cast it again while that duration is still going. So really important for this build and especially important if you're looking to push higher tiers. Because of that, we're going to skip over the gloves for just a minute and talk about the pants. We're running the Aspect of Might. This can give you damage reduction when you use a basic skill or spamming Wind Shear. This should always be active. You can even cast Wind Shear before you encounter mobs to get that damage reduction up. If you take a look at the tempering, we've got debilitating roar duration increase. And if you have more luck to even roll it as a bonus, as you see here, you can really have a tremendous amount of uptime and duration on this ability, just ensuring that you're always taking less damage. Again, the other tempering aspect, you'll want stun or freeze. Immobilize is a distant third, but stun or freeze will be the preferred ones. For the regular affixes here, you're looking for willpower, maximum life, and armor. This is going to allow you to help hit the armor cap between the additional armor line here and also the total armor on the tempering here, you will be able to reach 9300 mark once everything has been master worked up. Edge Master's aspect will be in the glove slot. This can allow us to deal a large amount of multiplicative damage. The reason for that is because we're almost always gonna be at maximum primary resource. In fact, as soon as we start generating it, we're just gonna sit at full the entire time. For the advocacies on the glove, you're gonna look for willpower, maximum life, and attack speed. If you can get more increased attack speed, the better. So look for that as the greater affix, but in general, anyone you get is fine. For tempering, we're looking for damage to distance enemies. This is going to be a really common theme. We're going to want to make sure that we have distance in order to increase our survivability, especially when it comes to fighting the bosses. The more damage to distant enemies that we can stack, the more benefit we'll get from our pair gun tree. We'll talk about that when we get there. Lucky hit, chance to stun, chance to freeze, over and over, essentially whenever that's the option. Yen's Blessing, and the reason that I like these boots over running one of the legendaries is for the damage reduction from close enemies. Just as your survivability, although you're trying to stay at range, inevitably you will end up with a mob hitting you. So it is nice to have some additional damage reduction. Metamorphosis Aspect, Ghost Walker Aspect, both of those will work just fine if you don't have a pair of Yen's Blessing. The rest of this piece, although beneficial, is not as important as that damage reduction in my opinion, and that's the sole reason we take this, and we of course cannot temper this piece. In the weapon slot, I happen to have a two-handed mace. You can use any two-handed weapon. They will all work. There are various attack speed caps. You want to make sure that you're checking those out. If you're the 1% of players that are interested in that, for 99% of players, that's not going to matter. So we're just going to cover the affixes and the tempering as well. You're going to get willpower, maximum life, and damage over time. This build will actually deal a large amount of poison damage. With that, on the tempering, you're going to look for a chance for wind shear to cast twice. This will help stack that poison even more. Damage to distance enemies, really important as mentioned before. In the Paragon Tree, we're gonna get 20% of our damage to distance enemies converted to multiplicative damage. So that's the reason why we're stacking this, but we will talk about that in the Paragon Tree. The aspect itself, aspect of the Moonrise, when you damage an enemy with a basic skill, you're gonna gain 4% attack speed up to five times. At maximum stacks, you're gonna enter Vampiric Blood Rage, gaining a whole bunch of multiplicative damage on your basic skill and some movement speed. This is really what's going to scale the build to new levels. Not only are we dealing large poison damage, but now our basic attack can deal some large damage as well. The biggest negative here is that our attack is just a straight line. Think of it as like a piercing arrow. So you're only going to hit enemies that are in that straight line. You constantly need to reposition. And that's the reason why it's not as fast at clearing up the rifts as some of the other more popular builds. But in terms of pushing, it's easily the best. In terms of jewelry, and more specifically gem slots, it is possible to actually eliminate one of these diamonds. If you happen to get the second roll on these where you see fire resist and on this ring cold resist, you get everything to line up just right. You can actually swap one of these diamonds out and put in a skull. 
that'll help you hit the armor cap quicker. It might not apply to everybody, but I just wanna mention that in case it does work for you. In the next slot, we're gonna run Aspect of the Calm Breeze. As for the Aspect, it's actually gonna deal poisoning damage over four seconds, right? We've talked about how this build is gonna deal poisoning damage, and it does a lot of poison damage at that. Also has a chance to fully restore your spirit. We don't care about that at all. The affix says maximum life, movement speed, because we can get it here, and attack speed. For the tempering, gonna run damage to distant enemies yet again, and digitigrade gate, and you could actually swap this just for movement speed. Choice is up to you. You should have enough cooldown reduction with the various pieces in this build to actually cast your Blood Howl to transform into a wolf and use that to move around from pack to pack. As you're learning the build, you may find the movement speed a little more comfortable. Rapid Aspect on the first ring, we're going to use Willpower, Maximum Life, and Attack Speed. Combining this with damage to distant enemies on the tempering. The second tempering you take does not matter at all. It will have basically no effect. Go for one of the companions like this has if you want. However, you do need to put a second tempering on the item in order to masterwork it. So that's the only reason we slapped one on. Rapid Aspect itself will give you additional attack speed on your basic skill, just allowing you to not only hit for more damage, but stack that poison. Aspect of Adaptability, when cast below 50% maximum resource, basic skills generate more resource. Don't care about that. What we do care about is when you're above 50% maximum resource, your basic skills will deal increased multiplicative damage. Very strong for this build, goes without saying, but nonetheless, we're using so many basic attacks. This ring will have the exact same affixes and tempering. You're gonna again look for willpower, maximum life, attack speed, and tempering, you're going for distant damage. For spirit boons, we're gonna run wariness, 15% reduced damage from elites, pretty standard on pretty much any build that you would ever push with, let alone just druid builds in general. Swooping attacks for the additional attack speed. Okay, we're stacking some things over and over in this build, right? We're stacking life, we're stacking attack speed. We're just letting this poison damage stack up on the enemies. Iron Feathered for that additional maximum life, and as we get into the skill tree and even Paragon tree, you'll see why the life and the scaling of it is just better and better as we go. Bolster is gonna allow you to fortify for 15% of your maximum life when you use the defensive skill. You've got a couple of them here, and an interesting thing you can actually do is use Cyclone Armor in between packs, and that'll actually allow you to fortify for additional life before you engage the next pack, or you could save it for that knockback effect. However, the knockback isn't really needed all so often until you get to the really high end of pushing. The final boon we're gonna take is Masochistic. This is just the best choice of what's remaining. It doesn't have a substantial impact on this particular build because the only thing that we're gonna shapeshift into and actually deal damage with is gonna be that trample. And this is gonna be somewhat infrequent. 5% of your maximum life here and there is better than nothing, but the rest of the boon options here are just really poor for this build. All right, let's take a look at the skill tree now. You're just going to put a single point in wind shear. The bulk of the damage of wind shear is not going to come from the actual ability itself, but the poison damage that it deals. So you don't need to boost this. Points are better off elsewhere. However, we'll use a point to get into enhanced wind shear, not just to get to the other tier, but also to unlock fierce wind shear. This is going to increase your movement speed and stack. This is going to really help you to reposition. Since we have that attack that goes in a straight line, you're going to constantly be moving, adjusting, repositioning to maximize the damage you can deal when there's multiple targets. We won't be taking any core skill. We'll put one point in predatory instincts, gives you increased crit against close enemies. We're trying to stay at range, so this is just a pass through, so that we can place three points into iron fur to get 9% damage reduction when going into wearburn form and persisting after. You'll be shifting for debilitating roar, and you'll also be shifting when you use trample, so you can basically have 100% uptime on this. Digitigrade Gate has got eight ranks in this current setup. You can choose to make the tempering rules have movement speed, as I mentioned when we we're going over the aspects. However, ideally, this is gonna be better to push these ranks. You will have enough cooldown reduction to actually use werewolf form between packs. As you're learning the builds, you may find movement speed more useful, but that's up to you and you can swap at your own preference. Ideally, this will kind of be the end goal that you wanna to work towards. Five points into Cyclone Armor because each additional rank is gonna increase the non-physical damage reduction, so keep pushing this up. We're gonna use Enhanced Cyclone Armor in order to unlock Preserving Cyclone Armor. This is gonna increase the damage reduction that you get periodically. So very important. Again, this build is all about surviving first. One point in Blood Howl, just to have it, 20% of your maximum life. Additional ranks would scale the healing more. However, we don't really need it. We have such a large health pool that 20% of say 70,000 life is really gonna add up. And also this heal is instant as opposed to a potion, which is a little bit slower. This becomes a super effective heal. Point in Enhanced Blood Howl to reduce the cooldown. Once you kill an enemy, you'll certainly be doing that. The higher tiers you get to, the slower you'll be killing but you also want to have Preserving Blood Howl, so you want to get there regardless to increase your attack speed for four seconds, more attacks, more poison. 
Putting five points into debilitating roar, we want to make sure that we have this skill max super important in order to push any content, whether that's the pit or even high tier nightmare dungeons. Enhanced debilitating roar is also going to allow you to fortify and preserving debilitating roar is going to heal you for 4% of your maximum life. The higher you scale your life, the better this is. Also important to note that with preserving debilitating roar, it's each second for its duration. It's not just a certain number of seconds when you cast it. So the fact that we're extending the duration through tempering and also masterworking increasing that again, we're gonna really essentially just be healing for a percentage of our maximum health all the time. Three points in ancestral fortitude. You may be able to move a point around here. As I mentioned, you might be able to drop one diamond out. You can tweak this as needed. Regardless, this setup is running three in ancestral fortitude, three in vigilance for the additional damage reduction when you use a defensive skill. One point into wolves, and then we're gonna put one point in enhanced wolf pack. And we're also going to take ferocious wolf back this is going to allow the wolves attacks to have a chance to fortify you for a percentage of your maximum life you can see the theme and hopefully you've got it by now the higher your life pool the more benefit you're going to get from all these various things three points in nature's reach you want to be at range or distance as often as possible nine percent multiplicative damage and you double this if they're slowed stunned immobilized or knocked back a single point in trample will be enough. We're just looking for the unstoppable here. The added bonus is that this will turn you into a werebear and also proc other things. We'll get to a couple of those things that we'll proc in just a minute, but the most basic of this is that it's gonna proc the damage reduction from iron fur, which we already mentioned. Two points in neurotoxin. As you know, we're poisoning the enemies with this build and the additional slow is just gonna help you reposition yourself and get more damage onto the targets and keep yourself safe. So it's worth putting the second point here where most your builds only put a single point to pass through to the other talents this one's actually putting two. Quick Shift has been redesigned and it's absolutely fantastic. We're putting three points into this. As mentioned, Trample is gonna transform us. So we're gonna get increased damage when we shift it from Trample. So not only are we getting Unstoppable, now we're getting a damage boost. Then you can cast Blood Howl, get another boost. And you don't have to shift from Werewolf to Werebear. This actually says whenever you shift into a new animal form. So you can be in human form from the Wind Shear, cast Blood Howl, Wind Shear into human form, and then cast Trample or even Debilitating Roar and keep these stacks of quiff shift stacking. Heightened Senses works exactly the same way when shifting into an animal form. So you don't have to go from one animal form to the other. Werebear is gonna grant damage reduction and Werewolf grant movement speed. So you're gonna be stacking all of these things constantly. You're spamming wind shear and then using your abilities, your buffs or debuffs to proc all these other things. Three points in Defiance is gonna deal additional multiplicative damage to elites from your wind shear. Natural Disaster will also get three points. Your Storm Skills will get multiplicative damage increased. Enemies that are stunned, mobilized, or knocked back. Resonance will get additional multiplicative damage for your Nature Magic Skills or yet again your wind shear. So all those just gonna boost your damage. Lastly, for the key passive, we're gonna run Ursine Strength. You can get maximum life in Werebear form for three seconds. You should be shifting back and forth pretty frequently. And if nothing else, at least when you use Trample, trying to survive, you're going to get that maximum life boost. Also, while you're healthy, you'll get additional multiplicative increased damage and increased overpower damage as well. For Paragon, in the first board, we're going to use Territorial. This is going to give you some increased damage to close targets, not really what we're going for here. More importantly, we get 10% damage reduction against close enemies. And if you're running Yen's Blessing, these two will add up and actually give you a large reduction to anything that gets on top of you. In the second board, we'll be working towards Thunderstruck. This is the bread and butter and the reason why we're stacking damage to distant enemies so much. You can get 20% if you're damage versus close and damage versus distant converted into multiplicative damage increase. In this particular setup that I've gotten, this is only going to get higher as the master working ranks improve. We've already got 188% multiplicative damage increase. That's an absolutely massive boost. As for the glyph, we'll run Tracker. You get increased damage to poison targets. Very effective, but even better, poisoning damage effects last 40 times longer. So this is really going to boost that poison damage. And thanks to the new aspects that we're running with Wind Shear, this is really going to help out. The third board will be Heightened Malice, and you'll actually loop around the other end. Really common for Druids. This has been going on for a few seasons. You're going to deal increased damage when there's three or more poisoned enemies, even useful against certain bosses that have adds. But in general, you're going to want this to clear out the trash leading up to that point. And the glyph is going to be earth and sky you'll get a bonus to all the magic nodes within range in this case we're looking to stack up things like the damage reduction from poison enemies just to help our survivability another common thing to do with constricting tendrils for the druids is just to pass through the boards without taking the legendary node that's exactly what we'll do here we're going to run keeper in this slot this is going to give you more bonus to rare nodes which in return is going to give you 10 percent maximum life and some additional nature magic damage in this case, we'll also be passing through the Inner Beast board, not selecting the Legendary node there either. And that's less common, but does occur as you're seeing in this situation. You're going to run Bane here. You're going to have increased poison damage, and poisoning damage effects have a chance to deal double damage over their duration. 
Given that we have a longer duration, then it's just going to kind of stack up and allow us to do more damage overall. The final glyph will be human, and I can't believe I'm saying that. In fact, I have not played a human form druid in any of the seasons, let alone run this glyph. So it's the first time I've leveled this up myself. Perhaps it's not for you. Going to get increased damage in human form and get damage reduction. And it's obviously a very good glyph if you're going to be in human form as often as we are casting wind shear. Guys, I can't say it enough, this is hands down the best druid build that's come out in the season. And if you're looking to farm higher tiers of the pit in order to farm the highest material, which you then convert into lower tiers in order to upgrade your gear, or just the highest tier material in order to finish off those final mastering ranks, this is the way to go. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.